What is going to be today? We are reviewing the WWE Ultimate Edition Monday Night Wars Walmart exclusive Mankind figure. Now, this is an Ultimate Edition I've been looking forward to. I think this might be the best Mankind action figure we've ever seen from WWE and Mattel, and possibly ever. You know, we're going to dive into it. We got some good accessories here. Very much looking forward to it. Been on display at a few shows we've been at, so I'm excited to dive into the Mankind with you. Of course, this is Walmart exclusive, so you can only grab this at Walmart. I'm not sure if it's available online or whatever, but it is hitting retail stores pretty fairly nowadays. I've seen a lot of people hitting. Of course, my area hasn't found shish. But a huge shout out to my man Figure World JP for hooking me up with this figure here, man. I appreciate you. But we do have the Mankind figure here. Standard packaging going on, but it is a store exclusive, so it's going to have the red border with the white accents rather than the white border with the red accents. But you get your accessories. You get a shot of Mankind there on the side. On the back, you get a shot of the prototype right there. And then you do have a shot of Mankind with his microphone. You got a little bio read. You have some information about the man there. Monday Night War logo here. Mankind down on the side, of course, and it is your standard WWE Ultimate Edition packaging. It's crazy how far we've come with the Ultimate Edition line. I feel like yesterday we were getting Ronda and Ultimate Warrior. I think they were on display at, what, Mattel headquarters or something in LA, and now here we are. So many different Ultimate Editions later. Need to do another ranking every Ultimate Edition figure. I know we're approaching the 100 mark, and we may even be over 100 now, which is just absurdity, but nonetheless, man, let's shut the hell up. Let's crack Mankind out of the packaging, find out what he's about, and see if this Ultimate Edition Mankind figure is worth a shish. So here's the Mankind figure out of the packaging. I'm liking what I'm seeing, man. I, I think I've seen enough to kind of establish the feelings towards this figure. But of course, we are going to progress through everything. We're going to take a look at every accessory you get with the figure. Break down all of the lore of the Mankind Ultimate Edition Monday Night Wars figure here. And we will break it all down, of course. But nonetheless, man, we are going to dive into the accessories of the figure. Find out what interesting things that Mattel has done with this figure, per se, that I think they executed really well. And we're going to dive into every single bit of detail that you need to know, man. So with that being said, let's get into the accessories accessories of Ultimate Edition Mankind, and then we will break down the Mankind action figure itself. So for the Ultimate Edition Mankind, I think we are hitting that threshold that we like to meet on the accessories for these figures. So you get three interchangeable head sculpts, we get some cloth goods, we get a championship belt, and that meets the criteria usually. Now we are seeing some brand new head sculpts here on this Mankind figure. You have this sculpted masked on head sculpt of Mick Foley that I think looks good. You have the tongue sticking out, you have the tooth missing, the nice mask coming through, the hair looks good. Not removable or anything, but I like the molded on mask, and it comes over the hair right there. Very good, very good, and I like this over, you know, different ones we've seen in the past. Not that the old ones were bad, per se, but this one is also very good, I think. Adding this to the catalog, I think, is good. And then you have another smiling face head sculpt, which Mankind was known to do. You know, I think this looks pretty good. He's kind of smiling there. No teeth really showing through. The tongue sticking out. These are very similar, but one has the tongue out. I like the tongue out more than this smiling one over here, but I like that we have some brand new head sculpts. I didn't reuse any head sculpts, and if you really don't like these head sculpts, you could easily pop on some of those other Mankind figure head sculpts onto this newer Mankind figure if you so chose. And and then we have the third head sculpt, which is the maskless head sculpt, which looks like he is under trance or something. I mean, this guy, it, it looks very odd. I'm not going to lie. I don't like this head sculpt. I don't even think it really looks like Mick Foley, in my opinion. I think the other head sculpts we've had of Mick Foley look much more closer to the character. This one is not doing it for me. It looks like a random guy. I, I don't really care for this one. It's definitely an interesting look. I, I don't despise it, but it's just not my favorite. I'm not going to use this head sculpt. You know what I mean? It's not one of those head sculpts I would use, but his hair's parted off to the side. He does have the, you know, the mask that comes with this, and this doesn't go over this. If you were wondering if you could kind of like maneuver this on here and place this onto this, it doesn't work that way. That doesn't work. So you, I mean, you could cut it, I guess, and try to make it work, but it's not meant to, you know what I mean? It's not meant to go on there, but you do have this uh, this weirdy head sculpt. And then we do have the loose mask, which I really, really like. I do believe this used to come on his other figures. You could remove this from the face, and they did a good job there, but now we just get the loose mask, which I think is pretty awesome, because you could just you know have him holding it or something like that, which I think it's cool. It's well sculpted. It looks good. A very unique mask, you know? It's a, definitely a very unique mask. I don't know how the hell this man was wrestling in this, but it is a cool accessory to have, obviously. And then he does come with the WWF Championship, which looks very good. I wish that Mattel would redo the gold that they use on these titles, but I've always loved this championship. One of my favorite championships of all time. Dude, it almost looks like that logo is modern. It's not. It is the Scratch logo, but it kind of, I don't know, like if you stood back a little bit, it kind of has that modern look, but it is the Scratch logo. No F on there, obviously, but the, the title belt looks good. I like this XQ 
execution by Mattel. And then he also comes with Mr. Sako because of course he does. You know, you gotta have Mr. Sako when you talk about mankind. And it just slides over his hand. It's not anything crazy. You know, it can slide over the fist. It can slide over the, the mic holding hand. So very easy to apply. It is a stretchy material. So you can just open that up and slide it over there. And it looks good. Good looking Mr. Sako. And again, something we've seen in the line before. So we are getting him here in the ultimate. And then I think one of the bright spots of this figure is the overthrow button down shirt that has the cut sleeves. So you will see you're getting the cut sleeves here, the bottom. It's a natted shirt. It has the loose tie. And I think they did a really good job here. One thing that's very cool is the tie is actually stitched onto the collar. So it's going to be a loose tie that you don't have to worry about falling off or falling, you know, apart from the shirt and you have to lose it or whatever. It's actually, you know, stitched in there. So it can be a loose tie dangling everywhere and it's not going to interfere with anything or lose it or anything like that. I like the pattern on it. It looks good. You do get the Velcro on the front so you can open the shirt if you want to. The tie will still be loose. You know, it doesn't un-Velcro and fall to the side, which I think is a genius way to do it. Very innovative, I think. Very creative. I think that is a, is a, a great way to do so. But you can Velcro the shirt shut, which is good. And it has the popped collar and everything. Very good. Very good stuff right here. And it's big enough to overthrow the torso, which I think adds to that bagginess of Mankind Mick Foley, which I like. It is just a really bright spot of the figure. And then underneath that, he comes with a plain white tee, which is Velcro. So you put this over the original torso, and then you put that overthrow shirt over this, so you can complete that. You don't get that black shirt underneath that pokes through. You don't get any, you know, worries about that. You can't, I mean, you could just remove this, but this is a good addition if you want to add to that layer of realism for the undershirt or whatever. You do get that option here with a white, plain white tee that you can put on anybody, really. And then for interchangeable hands, you do get a pair of mic holding hands or Mr. Socko hands. You get a pair of fisted hands to beat the hell out of people. And you do get the wide open, smiling, you know, waving style hand. I mean, there's so many different hands for this, but you know, you could wave at people, tell them to have a nice day and such. So getting into Mankind at the top of the head sculpt, I did remove the cloth goods just for this part of the review, and then I'll add the clothes later so you can see everything. But you do have a nice head sculpt here. I mean, this torso is very compact, and they're still giving him these massive shoulders and arms, which in this case, I'll give a pass just because the shirt's going to cover it, and Mankind always had the shirt on most of the time anyway, right? So I mean, it's not the biggest deal, but again, we need a fatter arm mold, a bigger, non- just ridiculously shredded arm like this. I mean, this is like a damn Lex Luger bicep, man. We need we need some fatter arms, man. We need some arms that are going to be more fitting for mankind and shoulders and things of this nature. So that is something that we need to see. But he does have this singlet torso. I'm not sure if this is the Sergeant Slaughter torso or a new torso. I think this is a new torso, but I could be wrong about that. But uh, we're going to get into everything here. It is just a regular black singlet. And then he gets into the brown pants. No, uh, I think these were tight, so it makes sense that it wouldn't have have any belt buckles or anything. He does have the thighs in there that are solid brown and then just black boots. So it's not the most exciting figure of all time, but I mean, Mankind wasn't out here wearing damn Seth Rollins crazy blingy attires, right? But before we put the clothes on, I do want to get into some articulation here. Head is pretty much non-movable and it kind of pops right off. It's not the, I mean, it doesn't fall off, you know, but you can pull it off with relative ease. You are getting a nice butterfly joint right here, which goes all the way back, which is very nice. And these arms are removable as all ultimates are, of course. But one thing that's it's kind of bummerific about this figure is the ab crunch. Ab crunch is virtually just non-existent. I mean, there is, I mean, like he can't really go back. He can't really go forward. You're getting a little bit of tilt there. You do get the waist swivel, which feels good. You do get splits here and it does have the drop down hips. So you can pull that down and then get a pretty decent kick forward here. Hold up just a second. Drop that down. You can get a pretty decent kick forward. I would say like a toe kick. And then uh, this does go down. You know, you get all that range of motion there. Upper thigh cut. You do get double jointed pinless legs and they're actually not tight. They actually feel smooth, so that's a nice sign to see. I know a lot of people worry about that. You do get the boot swivel. You get the ankles down and up. You get the toe articulation, and the ankle rocker, as we know, is changing among the new figures, and I can't wait to review a figure like that to see truly how good it is, but this figure is okay. It's kind of, I guess we'll see in the comparison, but I'm afraid he may be a little stumpy, but the legs look to be pretty good size, so we'll see, but let me dress this guy up, and then we will do some Mankind figure comparisons. So here's our Mankind figure comparisons. You can see the ultimate over here, and in comparison, I think the high is pretty money. You know, Ultimates seem to be a little bit bigger than Elites anyways, and it looks like this works out pretty good here. I felt like the body on this Defining Moments was a bit jacksy. I think they fixed that here. I like this version much better than the Defining Moments, and I didn't like how big the arms were. They just make his arms way too big. I think these are much more accurate, but you know, these were single jointed and didn't have a bicep cut and all those things, but it's a cool comparison. This isn't every mankind. I am missing the Elite 17, the SummerSlam Elite from years ago. There's our, I think there's a couple more Elite. I think the Amazon Mail Away, like the Elite 51 or whatever it was. So there are some different Mankinds we're missing here, but for the most part, this is a good comparison for some different Mankinds, at least in the recent day. And I think this one probably
probably does stand above the rest, but it is cool to see these. I just like the addition of the cloth goods and everything, even if the, you know, he's never really had an ab crunch, so I mean, I guess it's not the biggest deal ever, but I don't know, you know, he's, he's not going to be as poseable as maybe some other iterations of Mankind, but at the end of the day, I do like this version of Mankind, and it fits in nicely to our collections. But I think that all but wraps up this WWE Ultimate Edition review of Mankind from the Walmart exclusive Monday Night Wars line from Mattel. And I do enjoy this figure, man. I like it a lot. You know, I've been saying that, you know, we've needed a Mankind in the Ultimate Edition line. And I like some of the executions that we're seeing here on this figure. I really like the way they did the double shirt method. The way you can get that undershirt look and you don't have the black poking through. You have the loose tie that's actually stitched into the collar, which I think was genius. So you get that loose tie look, but it's not impossible to remove. Just really innovative things that they have going on here, which Mattel has been making strides in lately, especially the last, you know, three or four years. I'd say they've really made these strides that have improved the line so much, which is just crazy to see from, you know, the, the days of old where, you know, the, the line first started to now. We've touched on it a lot in this year specifically, just the strides they've made over the past few years that have led to this completely new and revamped WWE action figure line that they are kind of not necessarily batting 1,000, but they are just hitting so consistently and improving so much. And another thing about this figure I like is that the pinless joints you're getting aren't super overly tight, which is always nice to see, but I like the head sculpts. I don't like that one head sculpt where he's kind of looking like he's, I don't, I don't even know, he looks like he's under hypnosis or something like that. I don't know, I don't know about that head sculpt, but the rest of the executions are cool. I like the loose mask accessory. I like Mr. Sacco, even though we've seen it a couple times, but I think the bright sides of this future, this figure and the, just the executions of the different things, they just nailed it, man. And I, I think they did a really good job. So all of those things are very nice and I like to see them and I think you guys will also like to see them. But this is Walmart exclusive. If you guys want this figure, you're, you're going to have to go aftermarket or you're going to have to find it either on walmart.com, which again, I don't even know if it's in stock, or you'll have to go down the damn aisles of Walmart yourself, which is like just going to conquer a damn fortress by its own. So you may want to, you know, you never know what's going to happen there. So, you know, you got to be prepared there. But you know, nobody wants to go out on the, onto the shelves. It's very difficult to find things at retail nowadays, at least, you know, for, for a majority of people, I'd say. But everything considered, this Mankind is pretty damn good. And I think I'd rate it as the best Mankind that Mattel's ever made, and possibly ever. So I, I do enjoy it, man. But that is going to wrap up the video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Love to know your thoughts on this Mankind figure if you own it yourself. If you guys missed our AEW Sting review from yesterday, definitely go check that figure out. Very cool figure indeed, so definitely check that one out if you missed it. Huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all you fellas thank you guys so very much for all that you do you guys are absolutely incredible thank you guys so very much for everything as always but i'm getting the hell out man thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next video have a blessed one and i will catch you guys later